Hey guys! Another beginner's patches episode and this time we will add a VCF to the patch and again we will use the one from VCV and the VCF is a voltage controlled filter which will filter or attenuate certain frequencies according to the way we set it and we can control this with voltage now let's start with understanding what is control voltage in the last two episodes we've used voltage to change the pitch of an oscillator let's listen to this also so we've changed the pitch of the oscillator we've used voltage to change the pulse width of the pulse wave and also to change the sustain level and release time of the envelope generator now from this we can understand that pitch information and different modulation sources are all control voltage because we use this voltage to control different parameters but also the gates we are sending to the um, envelope generator are also control voltage because again we are using this to control other modules or parameters and we will see also in future videos that we can also use the audio itself and um, the waves the oscillator generates to control different parameters at audio rate frequencies so also this is control voltage and what i'm getting at is that everything is voltage um, in the case of VCVREC, it's virtual voltage, of course, but all voltage can be used to control and change parameters, and by that, act as control voltage. So next time you want to modulate something, try using all kinds of signals, all kinds of voltage, and see if you get interesting results. Now, it's important to keep in mind that when dealing with control voltage, um, how the range of the voltage we use interacts with the parameter or module we want to control or modulate and let's have a look at the VCF first and then see how different ranges affect the filter differently but just one thing before we do this I made a whole video about control voltage in VCV rec so if you want to go in depth about control voltage there will be a link in the description to this video so let's have a look at the VCF we will use the scope but we will also use a spectrum analyzer this one is from Bog audio so we can see the effect on the different frequencies let's also use another oscillator we'll just duplicate this one and i will send a sawtooth wave to the scope and also to the analyzer and also to the filter and you can see how rich in harmonic content this waveform is we can also listen to this let's connect this um, to input 2 so this is the sawtooth wave you can hear how bright it is let's say in comparison to a sine wave for example this is a sine wave you can hear how bright it is now on this specific filter we have actually two filters we have a low pass filter and a high pass filter the low pass filter will let the low frequencies pass and will filter or attenuate the amplitude of the higher frequencies so if we send the low pass filter also to the scope and to the analyzer we can see two things first of all if we look at the analyzer we can see that most of the higher frequencies are gone and if we look at the scope we can see that the overall amplitude of the signal also became very weak now let's listen to this also i will connect it to channel 3 you can hear that it's weaker so this is again the original sawtooth wave much brighter and this is after the low pass filter now the high pass filter will do sort of the opposite it will let the high frequencies pass and will filter or attenuate the amplitude of the lower frequencies so let's see this now on the scope and on the analyzer and listen to this also we can see that the amplitude of the lower frequencies um, got reduced this time but still the amplitude of the overall signal got reduced and it will sound like this this is our original wave you can hear it has a many more lower frequencies and this is the after the high pass filter now a filter has usually a frequency control or knob also called cutoff this one here 
With this knob we can set the point where the filter will start cutting off the frequencies above or below the cutoff point depending on the type of filter we use. Again in this case we have two types high pass and low pass. So if I start using the frequency knob let's listen to this. To the left we let more and more low frequencies in. To the right we cut the low frequencies and let the high frequencies pass and let's see and listen to this also from the low pass filter again to the left we will let more low frequencies um, pass and to the right we will let more um, high frequencies pass And there is something important here to understand, as we've seen already, the overall level of the signal is reduced quite a lot, and this is because, again, the filter will attenuate the frequencies, which will also attenuate the overall level, and if we send a signal that is reaching higher frequencies to a low-pass filter, its amplitude will go down faster. So for example, if we tune the oscillator to a higher pitch, let's say somewhere like this, we will have to open the filter quite a bit in order to get any sound. Let's listen to this. Already here, we almost have no signal. Because again, the filter will attenuate those frequencies, and if we tune the oscillator down, it will have many more lower frequencies or more energy in the lower frequencies, and therefore will be less attenuated from the filter. I can close the filter even more, and we still have enough signal going through. So next time you use a filter, make sure you know more or less where your signal is sitting frequency-wise, so you're not surprised why you get no sound or why the levels are so low. Now, different filters have also different levels of attenuation, usually referred to as poles, and this specific filter from VCV is a 4-pole filter. Each pole equals 6 dB of attenuation for each octave. So if, for example, we set the frequency of the filter to 1 kHz, or 1000 Hz, and let's bring back also the oscillator to its original frequency. Because we use a low-pass filter, the amplitude of each octave above that point, above that cutoff point, will be attenuated by 24 dB. So each pole equals 6 dB, and we have 4 poles. So we get 24 dB of attenuation for each octave. So in this case, at 2K, an octave above that, we will have 24 dB of reduction. At 4K, another octave higher, we will have another 24 dB of reduction. So 48 dB all in all, and it will continue like this also at 8 kHz, an octave above that, and so on. Now of course if we use the high pass filter, the frequencies that will be attenuated will be the ones below the cutoff point. Again, 24 dB of reduction for each octave, so 500 Hz, 250 Hz, 125 Hz, and so on. Now, most filters have also what's called a resonance control, which is a sort of a feedback loop at the cutoff point, which will boost the amplitude of the frequencies around that point, and this can add lots of character and color. So if we listen to this without any resonance, change the frequency, of course. And now, um, with resonance at around um, 12 o'clock, Again without, and with, and you can really see this boost also around the cutoff point on the analyzer, without, and with, and let's listen to this also from the low pass filter, so I will change everything to the low pass filter, have a look also on the analyzer, take the resonance down first without resonance. Let's take the oscillator a bit down. Oh yes, oh yes. And now with... You can see this boost around the cutoff point. 
without and with very nice now there is also something that's called self oscillation which means that at higher resonance levels and this will not happen with all filters the filter will start to self oscillate and generate a sine wave with the frequency set by the frequency knob so if we disconnect the oscillator let's disconnect it from everywhere and take the resonance all the way up you can see this on the scope we have a sine wave also on the analyzer and we can tune this with the frequency knob let's listen to this very nice so let's see how we can use this vcf this filter in our patch let's place it after the vco i will just disconnect everything and initialize it also we can get rid of the second oscillator now let's send the pulse wave first to the filter again red is audio and we will send the low pass output to the mixer and let's listen to this Already we can hear that the sound is darker. We can change the cutoff point and the color of the sound. Let's add also some resonance to it. Oh yeah. Now we can also distort the signal by changing the drive settings. And again, this is a voltage controlled filter, so we can control it with voltage. So let's use another sine wave output of the LFO to modulate the filter's frequency. So again, modulation is green. And now we go back to control voltage. Let me just turn this down a bit. We go back to control voltage and the different ranges we have. So first of all, unlike the PWM, on the oscillator where we had an attenuator for controlling the modulation amount here we have an attenuverter for the frequency this means that we can not only attenuate the signal but we can also invert it so the zero point is at the center like it is now and by turning the knob to the right we can introduce some modulation let's listen to this Now in this case, the modulation is bipolar. The LFO is outputting a signal. Let's see this also on the scope. That lives in both poles, positive and negative. You can see this here on the scope. So it's set to be a bipolar. So in practice, um, this means that the frequency knob will be modulated in both directions. It will open and close. Positive voltage will turn the knob to the right and negative voltage will turn it to the left but if we set the LFO again to be unipolar the frequency of the filter will only go up above the no position so it will receive only positive voltage you can see this on the scope this is the zero point and it only goes up so now the filter will only open and again, in this case, because we have an attenuverter for the frequency control voltage, we can also invert the signal by turning the knob to the left. So again, in the center, it's the zero point, no modulation. And to the left, we can invert the signal. And now the frequency of the filter will only go down below the position of the knob. Again, negative voltage will turn the knob to the left will modulate the frequency to the left in this case so it's closing the filter so when you have an attenuverter don't forget that you can also invert the signal and by that also invert the modulation itself and don't forget also to have a look at the modulation source and its range so now let's close the attenuverter let's set the LFO back to be bipolar we don't need to look at it on the scope anymore now let's set a different um, modulation source 
we will use a different modulation source um, for the frequency of the filter and let's use another row of the sequencer so we will use the second row again modulation is green very nice and since we can choose the amount of voltage for each and every step here we can set it back to zero we can open the attenuator all the way because we can set the modulation amount for each and every step. Let's change also the filter cutoff a bit, just around one o'clock, maybe something like this. And now let's change the modulation amount again for each and every step, so we can get nice rhythmic results. Do something like this. Very nice. Now here you can see that we are not receiving any gates and you are wondering why am I opening this knob all the way? Because when the release time is long enough, we will hear also this note, this step. So when this happens, also the uh, cutoff, also the filter will be open fully. Like now, for example. So we have some more variation. And again, this is how it will sound like with some delay and reverb. And that was it for today. Like always, there will be a link in the description to this patch. Feel free to download it and take a closer look. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please hit the like button. If you enjoy what I do, consider becoming a Patreon. If you want to see more videos like this, please subscribe and hit the bell. And have a good one.